Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Welcome to the live podcast. Don't wait to be great. Welcome my Clubhouse family. Welcome my folks on YouTube. Welcome my folks on Twitter and Facebook. Good morning, guys. It's a great day to be alive. Today's topic is how we're going to house displaced adults who receive guaranteed income. Thank y'all so much for being here. We super appreciate it. You guys have a lot of choices when it comes to this app or these social media streets, and you have chosen to be here with us. So we're super excited about that. Guys, my name is Derek Forston. I'm the owner and operator of Second Chance Housing. That's my personal independent living facilities where we take people from homeless to hopeful. I'm also the founder and CEO of Forston Consultants and where my family and I, my wife, my mom, my entire family, we go all over the world showing people how we do this particular model, which is housing displaced adults or homeless adults. And we how, how we do that from a shared living environment. So we thank y'all so much for being here. This is usually about a 90 minute room every time we meet every Monday, Tuesday, and also every Saturday. So again, guys, we're super excited that you guys are here. We love questions. So if you guys have questions or concerns, if you want to be pulled up on stage, we can do that. Or if you want to just type it in, in the chat, if you're in an area where you can't speak. But again, guys, if you're looking to do God's will and house people and be involved in real estate all, all at the same time, you're in the right place. Because we always tell people, if you love God, love people and love real estate, you are in the right place. So I want my beautiful wife to introduce herself so you guys know who she is and what she's all about. And then we're going to jump right into today's topic, guys. Again, housing displaced adults who receive a guaranteed income. Ms. Shea? Good morning, everybody. I am Shania Shea Forston, the president and founder of the Angela Denise Foundation, co-founder here at Forston Consultants, VA 101, and all of our many uh <laughs> business ventures. Um, I'm excited to be here. I am again, the president and founder of a nonprofit organization that utilizes the ILF model, which is a housing model developed here at Forest and Consultants, where we take people from homeless to hopeful, utilizing a shared, a shared living experience. And we are none like the rest. Okay. We do this top notch as if we were living in these places and making sure that our people are secure, safe, and have a clean, clean, beautiful living environment. So I'm excited about today's conversation, Derek. I look forward to all the questions and to our regular mods that are in Clubhouse. I'm going to go ahead and send y'all some requests to hop on over here and join us in StreamYard on the live stream. So be on the lookout for a text message from me, either in your Telegram or in your phone so that you can come on over and join the conversation. Derek, back to you. Uh Absolutely, man. Absolutely good to see a lot of people on a lot of different apps. I see that we have a lot of our usual people joining on Clubhouse, but we want you guys to come over to YouTube because I'm also going to be kind of sharing a little bit of a PowerPoint. Um, being on YouTube now, there's a lot of people that are super interested in what it looks like in terms of what we do. So I can't do that on um, Clubhouse that much other than me just changing my profile picture, but I'm super excited to see a lot of new faces but I'm probably even more excited to see a lot of the older people that are coming back to us. People that came to us at one point and, and maybe life got busy or they had a change of plans, but now they're back. So I love that you guys are still family. And again, for all of the new people that have no clue who we are and what we do again to make a long story short, man, we show people how to start their own. Essentially what we don't call it is a group home. Most people have heard of group homes before. We have coined the phrase independent living facility, but I love the phrase even better housing program. Yeah. So we teach people how to start their own housing program without the need for a license, without the need to own the property and without the need to have to be a nurse or an LPN or a medical professional, as some people think. So that's our total job in my life. And my job is to tell people how we do this model, because a lot of people think you have to own the property. A lot of people think there's a lot of licensures to get into what we do. So we show people how to house homeless or displaced adults. And we do that in a shared living environment. So that means, you know, more oftentimes than not, there's going to be multiple people in one asset. So again, what we do, guys, we take one asset and we rent to multiple people. No different from a multifamily, right? No different from a 10 unit building, an eight unit building. We just take that same four bed, two bath home and I'm going to house eight people that will otherwise be homeless without me. Right. So as we begin to go through the day, we're 
we're going to be bringing a lot of different people who we also teach and who we coach it to. And then we're going to also let you hear their experiences as well. But if you're new to us, I want to make sure I definitely honor all of the new people. And thank you to all of the faithful people that are always here. But if you're new to us, definitely put in the chat the word new. I want to make sure that we cater to you all and give you all kind of the beginnings of what all of this is. So, again, if you're new to us, just type into the chat new. And again, if you're in Clubhouse, we definitely want you guys to come over to YouTube and join us live because we will be showing a few slides in terms of what we do. So um, looks like I got Mr. Dornico Rigel on stage from Dayton, Ohio. So I want you guys to meet him as well. D, good morning, big bro. Good to see you. How's it going? Uh, good morning, guys. Everything's great. Just busy. Uh, I missed the last call because I was in the hospital. Uh, the baby had to go get a biopsy and a few other things, but they ruled out the major surgery, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Good stuff. Yeah. So we had to finish Perfect. up there. Uh, we're home now, so it's just everything's getting better, but I, I'm just Good excited. Stuff. Tell the people who you are, man, and like, what do oh. you do, big bro? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Dornico Rogel. Uh, I'm open. I'm, I'm somebody that is not not gonna let a moment pass without me seeing how I can be in that situation. I think that's kind of important. You know, we we may see people do great things, but what can you do in that? Like, so I I just had a long call with my brother. Um, yeah. He, he's uh, face to face with the valley, but thinks he shouldn't go. I said, boy, walk through the valley. You don't know what's on the other side of that valley. Uh, we, we got business opportunities that we are debating about. Some people call it on the fence. I, I don't even deal with that. I think it's a debate with yourself whether you you worth it or not. Uh, yeah, I'm worth it. So right now I'm operating out of three facilities, but I can see 10 facilities. I can see okay. other opportunities. As long as I can see it, uh, I'll just stay in the valley as long as I need to be there. And and, and on the other side, I'm pretty sure uh, there's something great. So that's absolutely. Me a, you know what I'm so saying? So just in case for all of the new people that have no clue who you are now, the clubhouse people probably know you, but we're, we're getting a lot of followers now on YouTube. So when you say you're working out of three facilities, does that mean ILS? Where are you located? Like, tell us all of that. Where? Wait, wait, no, no. I tell you what. Where are you located? Let's start there. Uh, I'm in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I operate out of the Huber Heights area and also the Clayton area. Uh, he, Dayton is kind of chopped up into sections. You got, okay. um, you know, and those sections are kind of class-based, you know, your lower okay. class. And how long ago did you learn this model from Forston Consultants? Uh, about almost two, coming up on two years, man. Good stuff. Two, Love it. Two years, <laughs> uh, in about 20 days. Something like that. Wow. 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 So happy yeah. early anniversary. So you yeah. have three ILFs right now in Dayton, Ohio. What is your population? Who do you serve? Men, women, old people, young people? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm somebody that's a firm believer in whoever's brought to me. That's a divine situation. So I really don't shy away, but I really don't like young people. 18 years old, I'm going to be very, very critical. You had to show me that. Uh, I need to accept you. They do too much, man. Um, I don't know if y'all feel the same, but I love that sixty-year-old man or woman that just wanna, they just wanna live. They don't want no drama. They just want peace. So for those people, I, like I'm in a situation right now. I got a gentleman that I brought in, and he's not clean enough for the, his roommate. His roommate called me up and said he's ready to go. He leaving. I'm sorry. I'm gonna pay you. Twice what I owe you because I love what you're doing, but I'm leaving. Wow. I said, why are you leaving, man? I can't live like that. He's not, so I had to have that come to Jesus meeting last night. And and yeah, I had to put some fire under his his behind. It, it was funny because people that know me, uh yeah, it was the it was old school Medea, not this new Medea. This new Medea <laughs> This was the old Medea that <laughs> but yeah, it was. So, so, in other words, you had to restore order. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what we would call it. Yeah, yes, sir. Got because, it. yeah, it just say I, I can't do the 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 filthiness. You don't want that. Uh, yeah, they're renting a space, but they're renting the bed. He not renting the whole house. You you caught about to cause the whole house some some heartache. So, right. yeah, we got that. that. 
Right. Can't have that though. But and guys, a- as you see, right, we, we hadn't even got too deep into the topic already. And look at kind of what's coming out. And this is a part of it, right? But because of his, his coaching and our rules and the structure of the ILF model, we got ra- ways to combat that. Because a lot of times people are going to ask questions like, well, what do you do when people are messy? How do you get them to clean up? So these are the questions that I hope you guys are going to be asking today, right? And we're going to try to compact this in about 90 minutes today. So again, guys, we encourage all questions and all concerns in terms of what this is and also how to operate it. So let's m- move on real quick before we get too deep in, into to the weeds. I want to do a few more intros and I want to jump into to the topic. Miss Tiffany, good morning. Good to see you, sis. How's it going? Good morning, you guys. I have missed being here in the room. Have we you- missed you. We missed you. Okay. Hopefully all is well. All is well. Um, we had our huge um, homeless outreach uh, I, that I go to every Tuesday that we partner with another organization. And we, unfortunately, the lady that leads it, she had a family emergency and couldn't do it. So I kind of got thrown into that spot yeah. last week. So, um, yeah. guys, I'm telling you, like, we had churches that reached out to us. My dad's church was a huge, huge blessing to us. And we were able to serve over a hundred um, plus um, homeless people on Tuesday evening. When I say serve them, you guys, I mean, we gave them everything that we possibly blankets, sleeping bags, food, clothing, shoes, like the churches and the other organizations that we partner with really stepped up. I had a friend that hosted her Christmas party and your entry fee into the party was some of the things that we had or what are the things that we had on the list. I had to have like I could barely get it in my in my truck that we had. So it was just my my brokerage, um, my my broker, her and her family and all the agents. We have like 40 plus agents in our brokerage. They all jumped on board. I didn't know I was like getting all these Amazon things. And I was like, what is going on? And I had told the lady that was in charge. I was like, I just feel abundance in my heart. And I know God is going to take care of it. So when I say God showed out, you guys, we have stuff for months to come. So we have stuff that we wow. through. And not only that, I mean, people are like, well, why are you doing this? You know, and you provide the housing. And I was like, but this is my way. This is Good Samaritan's way of giving back to you, to the community. So we actually um, we're kind of in a situation with like Donico just mentioned. Um, we have a gentleman that I'm getting ready to transition out because he just will not follow the house rules. He's dirty. He keeps the house dirty. Um, he's still in the other tenants food out of the refrigerator. And so he lost his job, started lying about it. His sister was trying to, you know, pick up the slack for him. But I was like, no, it's just time. The operator, I mean, the uh, the uh, Good Samaritan Solutions just said he's got to go. So it's not beyond my control. He's got to get out of here. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, him out. But don't you know, through this outreach that we had um, or whatever this past week, we came across a very good gentleman and it broke me down to tears because I was like, God, you had this gentleman in the in the in the wing just waiting for us to have a spot. Mm. So it's just been good. We're, we're currently we're in Oklahoma City, of course, we're operating there. We have two ILFs um, and we have been with the Forstons for man, it was a year. Well, we started in the summer of 2022 kind of listening, but we opened up our first house in November of 2022. And so we've been with the force of a little over a year. Now. So it's been really good. Like I'm excited about the new year and what all it will bring, but these partnerships, I know I always talk about the relationships that we bring or that mm-hmm. we foster and, and really, uh, stay involved and connected with it's just shown up. God has just shown his hand through these relationships time and time again. And we're able to help people get IDs now. You know, sometimes people will come and they want. Wow. So good. So it's just like, like, and when I say we have a connection, we step in front of the, in the front of the line, like people are in line for these things and they say, Hey, Tiffany, just come through, let us know. We'll do an interview right here on site and we'll walk your people through it. So it's just, I know that's nothing but the favor of God. And it's been difficult. Get me wrong it's been difficult the last couple of months you know just a lot of challenges have been thrown at us but on the flip side of it every morning i wake up and i'm like god i know you're gonna do even the smallest thing today so much you know so much is just going on and so anyway my family has really jumped on board and been connecting with us and really encouraging us and so 
it's been good. It's been really good. So I'm just thankful that, um, you know, that we have the opportunity and that God is just continuing to grow us, that we have, you know, the Forsens, Forsen Consultants, our VA, all of it. We just, it's, it's all in one. And I just feel like it's God's blessings uh, definitely pouring out on, on Good Samaritan Solutions. So super excited about being here. I know that was a little lengthy, but I'm excited. I haven't been here last week. I know. Get it all out, Tiffany. So, I love it. I so love it. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Tiffany, thank you so much. We appreciate that. And well, what I love so much about Tiffany and Dornico and soon to be Neon to Next is that if you guys are new to us and this is your first time kind of around us or, or, or if you've been around and you disconnected and came back, this is kind of what it looks like, right? And we call this moving at the speed of the instruction. So just a year ago, you know, Tiffany didn't know anything about any of this. She wouldn't have been involved in any of that stuff that was just talked about had she not taken the coaching and actually made the decision to say, man, you know what? I want to be in real estate, but I want to be in real estate in a different way that can also impact the lives of other people, right? There's nothing wrong with real estate. In fact, we love real estate. Remember our slogan is that we love God, love people and love real estate. But why not be in a form of real estate that changes the lives of people to where you're able to make all of these different connections? And now you're living by that other mantra that I told you about, Tiffany. Nine months ago, I told Tiffany, I said, Tiffany, you want to be in a, in like a kind of a space where you're respected by your community. Yeah. Remember the other mantra that we live by. We want to do God's will. We want to help people. We want to be respected by our community. But we also want to make a little money to be able to feed our family. That's what's tied into all of this. And that's why the independent living facility model and housing the homeless or, or the displaced is an absolute no brainer. So I'll take two seconds for a quick commercial break. Guys, our ILF Mastery Blueprint is still on this crazy sale that we started back in November of Black Friday because of how the economy is. And 2023 has been tough for a lot of people. Trust me, I can speak from that from firsthand. We decided to leave that sale on in terms of a, doing a Christmas sale and all of that. So instead of our ILF Mastery Blueprint coaching being $15,000, guys, it's only $4,700. So we're, we're going to put a link in the chat um, or actually a phone number that you can text um, IMB and they'll send you the information in terms of how to get that. And we'll also give you the coupon code if you just want to go to the website and type it in. But that number is 407 813 1335 and you can literally text that in terms of letting my team know that you want that $4700 one-on-one coaching instead of paying the normal price of the 15 grand. But back to what I'm talking about right now, right? And that's why Dornico and Tiffany seem to make this look easy. That's because they're family now and they've taken that ILF Mastery Blueprint and we coach them one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I'll admit, neither one of them need us as much as today as they did a year ago. And that's because the coaching works as long as you listen to it and you move at the speed of instruction and you apply kind of what we're telling you, right? I myself literally just posted literally just two days ago that we're looking for another facility because the calls keep coming in. Things keep growing and getting better. We also just released footage on YouTube that talks about we're not bashing Airbnb, but why are we getting so many calls now at Forced Consultants of people that want to do this now and are trying to pivot? From Airbnb. For some people, it's just not working. And then for some people, they just want to do something more meaningful with their real estate, just like I told you, Tiffany, who was doing. Because don't get it twisted. Tiffany and her family has been in real estate a long time, right? Affordable housing and all of that. She's just in the kind of housing now where she takes one asset, a three bed, two bath home, and now she's taking six people that will be sleeping on the street without her. And now she's able to bring those people in and bring them from homeless to hopeful. Put the word me in the chat if you want that to be you. Like if you want to experience that and being involved in real estate, doing God's will and helping people, guys, God made this thing genius. God combined real estate and social services together. That's all this really is, y'all. Put the word me in the chat. If you're in Clubhouse, please join us on YouTube. We put that link there. But anywhere else where you guys are joining from, put the word me in the chat if you want to experience what Dornico and Tiffany and Shay and I are doing now and what Neonte is doing. We're doing God's will. We're helping people. We're in real estate. 
And again, we're helping a population that a lot of people are just turning their backs on. I think that's pretty cool that we can get into that, y'all, because I used to joke and tell people I was a poor social worker, barely making ends meet. And I was praying all the time. God help me and my family. God bless me financially. God, I need more money. And the whole time I told y'all, man, God put me in the middle of what I should have been doing my whole life. God showed me a way to combine social services, which is what I already was doing. It's a whole message in that. Sometimes we're surrounded by the very thing that we need, y'all, and we overlook it. Yeah. That whole forest for the trees saying, that's what that means. For the trees. Like, you're, that thing you're looking for is on the tip of your nose. Guys, I was a social worker, barely making ends meet, making 28 grand a year. And God showed me a lady making $41,000 a month thousand people in rats and roaches that's what started all of this and when i saw that miss Cheryl, i was like why not me and the moment we caught it that's was like man you know what we got to show this to other people there is no way we keep this to ourselves the way that this is changing our life like and neonta you're coming up next neonta's beginning to be like this other thing now like she's a housing provider she's doing the hr rate but she's also spreading the word to other people Hey, girl, you need to do this. Girl, you need to get into this. If you like real estate, you should try this ILF thing. Now, I'm going to shut up. Neonta, come on stage real quick. Tell the people who you are, where you're located, and who do you house and how long you've been involved in this, Neonta. Good morning. Good morning, family. My name is Neonta St. Ford. My husband and I, Romel, own and operate Saints Care LLC in Miami Gardens, where we house uh, military veterans predominantly. I actually have somebody who's not a military veteran that I got from a uh, <laughs> from a rehab. I got one guy that's not a veteran not a right now. That's not so a veteran. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of excited about it. He, he's cool. I don't know how long he'll stay. He's, he's actually kind of transitional. But nonetheless, he said he was only be there a week. It's been three. So I just picked up my third week of rent. So look at God. Let's <laughs> go. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that part. Yeah, go and hit them horns on that, bro. I love it. I love it. <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, man, um, I've been, we've been doing this um, about, what, it's actually a little over a year now. We actually opened up our first house in October. Uh, I took the June class of 2022, opened uh, our first house in October, and been going strong ever since. Um, back, uh, what's his name? Nico said something that really blessed me. He said he was talking to his brother about being in the valley and going through it. And I kind of feel like Saints Care is in that valley space right now. But one thing I do know that at, at when, when we come out of that valley, there's nothing but mountains going up, you know. So I'm looking forward to going through this space and uh, seeing God do what God does. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in, in the midst of it all. And even, but even in the valley, that is the, the good part about it is even in the valley, God is still showing himself and proving himself in the midst of it. You know, um, I actually was uh, supposed to have a meeting today. Had a conversation with my coaches. Yes, I said my coaches. I know they y'all coaches, but they my coaches. Uh, <laughs> earlier this <laughs> week, in regards to that meeting, and um, that 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 meeting was all. I mean, the coaching <laughs> that conversation with my coaches really opened my eyes and opened me up to some ideas and things like that. So super excited about that uh, conversation I had with them. Um, needless to say that meeting actually didn't even happen because the person actually ended up, I called her last night to confirm that we were still on because I have some other things going on today, like work <laughs> for 12 hours at one o'clock. So I was like, Hey, I need to make sure you're going to be on time. Da, 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 da. And she was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was supposed to call you. I didn't even make it down there. Um, you know, and I actually, I decided I'm going to go the Airbnb route. I was like, okay, cool. No problem. You know, I'm, I'm glad I called you. Um, so I didn't jump up all early in the morning trying to do something that I be at a place that I ain't need to be at. Um, but anyway, so we we're pivoting away from that. But one thing I know when one door closes, God opens another. So I'm super excited about what's to come. Um, I could have found my space in a place of sadness and feeling, you know, distraught and like, man, Lord, I was looking at this and I was expecting this, but I'm super, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm yet trusting God. Like, uh, what's his name? Job said, yet will I trust you? That I'm is. saying, Lord, yet will I trust you? So I'm excited about what's to come and looking forward definitely for 2024. Um, even was actually sitting here before I got on thinking about, um, expanding expansion and going into South Carolina and some things that we got planned for that. So 
I'm su super excited and uh, happy to be actually be able to be here because I didn't think I was going to be on because I was going to be at that meeting. So I'm super <laughs> excited I can be here today. Good. I'm glad you're here. And I did get your text. So, yep, I get it. Um, I love it. And our conversation was so good. Uh, it was actually an after hours conversation. And and we really delved into um, the opportunity that Neonta had. And I know we've discussed it here on our platforms before. And, um, you know, with with our beloved Otis, where we talked about, you know, partnering with the home on owner to run the ILF model. Um, in this instance, this conversation went a lot deeper than that because we started crunching numbers, right? Um, we started cr really crunching numbers and we showed Neonta the opportunity and what it will look like if you're running a home for someone um, that you've already gotten all the coaching for, that you're going to be the HRA, the house overseer and everything else. How do you make that work and how do you make it lucrative for your business? That was the conversation that we had. So um, it was honestly, Neonta, I, I believe that was the best opportunity or decision for that individual to make. Um, as our numbers looked very nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. And as, right. And as I put into <laughs> the is. chat, oh, I'm and as I put in, in the chat, you know, that's one of the things that Otis always talked about. And that's one of those prayers that we've often said. God, if it's not for me, remove right. it from my plate. And yes. if you guys don't know my brother, you know, you know, I, I, I'll take this second to say that this as well. My brother, Mr. Otis Forston, God bless him. My brother passed away, guys, November 28th. So this is something that we always did and taught together. So if you're new to us, you may not know that. So the original webinar that everybody watches before they be actually begin to be a part of us and what we do, that other gentleman, that's my big brother, guys. And we've done this for years together. Unexpectedly, my brother passed away, guys, November 28th. And it took us all by surprise, broke my heart and it broke all of our family's heart. But we're living on the legacy um, in terms of what he did, what he was all about. And it's interesting that one of the last conversations that we had with Otis live was this very topic that yeah. we're talking about right now, right? A few people had the opportunity to do kind of um, what was presented. It was Katara. It was Neonta. It was also Joanne. Yeah. And it's interesting that Otis literally, like one of the last two times that we met live, man, that's what we kind of met about. So if you guys miss my brother, you never heard him speak. God bless you. Because he was a bundle of joy, inspiration, and knowledge when it comes to what we do. And again, I'll take this second again to thank everybody that was in prayer, that was in fasting, or whatever you did, words of encouragement for me and my family. Because again, I jokingly say this, but I'm serious. That's the only reason that I don't come in here and bawl and cry like a baby. Because every time I kind of think about him and talk about him, it gets a little emotional, right? We've done this a long time together. So thank y'all so much. I really appreciate that. But back to Neonta and also back to Tiffany or Donico before we jump back into it. So again, if you're just joining us and you've always wanted to start your own housing program or what you thought was a group home, this is what we do, guys. And it's called an independent living facility and it's called a shared environment. But most importantly, very easy. We just call it a housing program. And this does not require a license. This does not require staff. And this was does not require for you to be a nurse or some medical professional. The only requirement to do what we do is you need to have a big heart for people and a natural love for God. Because some patients also going to come in between those two things. And as long as you've got that and your drive ain't money, 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 you can do well in this. Because watch this. I also tell people I was a poor social worker. I've been wanting to be rich my whole life. So I wanted to make money. But in this business, guys, the money can't be the only drive because if it is, you're going to get burnt out of something that you're trying to do good in. But you're going to get burnt out if it's only for the money. Right. Now, if you want to get into something that's real estate and you want money, 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 go into Airbnb and other things like that. Because, again, your heart doesn't really have to be connected to it to deal with the population that we deal with and the kind of people that are literally on their worst of their worst in their life at the moment they need you. You need to have a heart of compassion, right? So I always tell people, you love God, love people, love real estate. This is it. You don't need a license and you don't have to own the property. That's the biggest 
disclaimer that we give everybody because most people at one point in your life, you thought that you needed a license to do what we do. About six, seven years ago, I started this thing, God and me. And now today, instead of it being just one house and one me, there's over 275 of these ILS and it's throughout multiple people that we've taught it to. Exactly. And we're in 20, I think 26 different states now. There's more than four people that purchased the ILF Mastery Blueprint uh, this past week. And they're all in different states finally. So if I'm not losing count, I think we're in 26 or 27 different states now. So big shout out to all of the people that are taking advantage of that holiday sale and not paying the 15 grand for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, but paying that $4,700. And big shout out to the people that are using, using the financing. So if you guys forgot about it, we offer financing and in-house payment plans. So we make it a no-brainer for you guys to get into it. And I'm super excited about the year of 2024. I'm usually the one that says, don't rush the year and let's live it all out. Guys, 2023 has been so rough in business and life. And just personally, I'm ready for 2024. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I think we all are. And one of my sayings that my brother always lived about was no matter what, you got to keep pushing forward. I think 2024, Tiffany, is going to be a great year for real estate. I really do believe that. A lot of that wholesale stuff that people were talking about into, a lot of those opportunities are going to be coming back. The commercial space, I think, is going to be slamming because of the way people purchased years ago. So in the interest rates now. So I always tell people, no matter what, it's always the greatest time to get into real estate. But when you do a model like with what we do, when you take the one asset and you went to multiple people, guys, what we do is a no brainer. And I'm proving that I'm literally getting ready to take over another house that somebody's literally just moving on, doing something different. Guys, I Shay and I take over a house in less than 15 days and it's already got seven people in it. And the capacity is eight. How crazy is that? So that's what, what I mean just by opportunity and being in the right place at the right time and knowing the skill set that if an opportunity like that comes up, you're ready to take it. And, and let me share something, Derek, because I think a lot of people, when they hear us talk about taking over and takeovers, a lot of times it's us going and and people that we HRA to on a reg, not even on a regular basis, but people that know or hear of us in our community that want to partner and, and want the HRA partnership. When we go and do our, our assessment, hello, not of the residents, but of their program. And we realize like, listen, you're not a good fit for what we do as ILF, um, you know, as the ILF model. So we would definitely need to have you do X, Y, and Z um, and maintain that for up to six months in order to even be considered someone, a, a partner, a referral partner. So what we're doing now is, you know, as people are coming in and wanting that opportunity to partner with us in regards to obtaining um, referrals, they're realizing that we're telling them that you're not a good fit for us. And then they're realizing that they are truly over their heads and what they end up doing is saying, well, listen, what can I do? I want to keep the property. I own the property. I thought this was the right way. And I'm realizing I'm not getting calls or I'm not getting sustainable clients. What can I do to even leverage you all? And that conversation comes up. Well, we can take over your property and pay you a fee, um, a, a set rent, because you are the homeowner. So those are things that we're doing. So we're going out there and we're reviving um, people's group homes. And you see me with the quote fingers. For those of you that are on Clubhouse, I am definitely using my quote fingers because we do not utilize the model group homes. We do not run group homes. We run independent living facilities. That is our model. That is what we stick by um, and what we stick to. So when we are going to refer or be an HRA to someone, they have to have that same quality, that same standard that we are looking for. So as the ILF, um, as ILF consultants and that being our brand, uh, what we're doing now is we're literally going and, and taking over people's existing properties because they're not doing well. They're not maintaining their homes. They're not treating the residents right. They don't even know how to properly assess. So they're bringing anyone in. They're getting 
turned upside down in regards to not receiving an income, but yet they've got a house full of people and don't know how to collect their payments. So in that sense, if they're not willing to take our coaching and learn how to transition their ILF, what we're doing is we're now going in and taking over. Plain and simple. Derek? All right. Good stuff. So let's jump into the topic, guys, because I want to kind of get through this. I also want to make sure that we honor all of the new people that are new to us and also a lot of people that are just catching on to us through YouTube. I appreciate everybody that has subscribed. Um, Our YouTube channel is growing pretty fast, um, more than it used to. So I'm going to think that's to all of the lives and just us asking. So, again, if you're on here and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel for all of this great content that we're putting out and that you also hit that notification bell that you never miss anything. So, again, today's topic, guys, again, is how to house displaced adults who receive guaranteed income. So when people hear me say that whole guaranteed income, sometimes people get caught up on that and says, Derek, what do you mean by guaranteed income? That just simply means that most of our residents, um, I'm not really depending on them getting up to go to work in the morning and going to work 40 hours. I had a strategy call yesterday, and I hope that gentleman is actually on this call. And if he is, you just put me in the chat. If, if you're okay with that, him and I had a, a discussion and this is something that he actually tried a few years ago. And um, he just kind of spoke about again, how the model kind of didn't work for him because he didn't realize that we kind of had structure. So some people think that, that when we rent or when we do our model that we just rent rooms to people and that's it. They don't know that there's structure built into what we do. So there's rules, there's regulations, there's an assessment that we do to make sure that we're housing the right person. So again, um, the people that receive that guaranteed income is either going to be through SSI and SSDI. He depended on people that only had jobs, right? The bulk of the people that we house receive a guaranteed income and nothing stops it. The government shutdown don't stop it, right? Monkeypox don't stop it. COVID-19 don't stop it. It's guaranteed. And that's what makes it guaranteed to us, right? So that's kind of the step number one in terms of how this all works. Now, do I house the guy that have a job? Absolutely. Because we don't discriminate. And because the housing market is so crazy, no matter where you live at, it's expensive everywhere now. And some people just can't afford to go out and get their own apartment or their own house, maybe because of their background, maybe because of not having a good credit score. So we offer an environment that's a shared living environment. As long as they don't mind sharing and having roommates, this is going to work out for, for them. Or even for the guy that says, well, Derek, I don't want to share a room, but well, we offer private rooms as well. We offer private suites. So even in this one model, there's three different ways people can be housed, right? Shared housing, which works for most people, the private suite, and also just that private room. Okay. So the other side to that, and one of the first steps is turning yourself into a business. So oftentimes I said that I never really wanted to people to know me, Derek as some guy that just was renting rooms to people. I wanted to be respected as a program. I wanted to be respected as a company that was saving lives in the community through housing. See how that sounds really different? Put a number two in the chat if you think that sounds different from me just being Derek, some guy that rent rooms, or Second Chance Housing is the name of my program, and we're saving lives by housing people through shared housing in the community. See the difference in that? So that's the way that we present it, and that's the way it really looks. And again, removing myself as Derek Forston, and I'm going to start a business, an LLC, or maybe a nonprofit. Shay can speak to the point of the nonprofit, right? But I started an LLC, which removed Derek, and now I have a business. Correct. And watch this. I jokingly say this, but I'm serious, though, right? Sometimes some of us, may not live in the nicest area of town. So guess what starting a business does for you? That business can take a Tyrone Jackson that lives on Martin Luther King and that turns into Jackson Solutions right. with the business address in the best part of town for 50 bucks a month to pay for that address. That's a whole other lesson in business that Shell talk about next Tuesday. But when you want to talk about presenting yourself as a business and going to the bank, asking for money, getting loans and lines of credit. That's another kind of teaching that we do on our business coaching. But I can take a guy that's named Tyrone Jackson. He lives on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Now to a regular bank, that looks real bad. 
they know that he lives in a bad part of town and they're going to stereotype him. But now I can go and take Jackson Solutions and go get an office for 50 bucks in Metro West in Orlando. And they think I'm a rich dude now. See, that's a whole, and see, I see you smiling, D. That's a whole nother coaching that we try to get people to understand the mindset of the other side of what they're thinking about you. Don't forget, we also do business coaching, okay? <laughs> and you should not have this program in your name. Nobody should be talking about, yep, I housed him over there with Derek. I housed him with Dornico. Uh-uh, I housed him with Fresh Start Housing. Oh, I housed him with that lady Tiffany. Uh-uh, that's Good Samaritan Solutions. Right? Neonta is Saints Care. See how everybody turned themselves into a business? Mm -hmm. And then right after that, and I'm going to speed it up just for the sake of time, but once I turn myself to a business and also got a mind frame of who I'm housing, because I'm really not going to be too picky on my decision on the population I'm, 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 I'm going to house. I'm going to let the community dictate who what, what the need is. Right. Now, I may go into it and be like, Neonta, you know what? I'm only going to house military veterans. That was kind of what Neonta said because she's a military veteran. That made sense for her. And also, God was so behind it. God dropped a program in her lap that sent her people and sends her people that are military veterans. Oh, and by the way, they pay half of their rent, too. That, that's a whole nother coaching. Mm -hmm. Right? But once I turn myself into a business, the next thing is advertise, advertise, advertise. Like crazy that you are a housing provider. Somebody go say, well, Derek, what, what, what if I don't have a house? No problem. You still need to advertise it. You have to. And if you haven't heard of our HRA program, the Housing Referral Agency, you can become a housing referral agency tomorrow. Still make an impact in, in the community and still make income because you're going to get paid to make referrals to people even though you don't have a house. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you need to figure out how do you get the real estate? That's the most important piece to what we do, guys. Yeah. Is getting the real estate to do it in. And again, if you guys are in Clubhouse, don't forget to join us live on YouTube. I'm getting ready to throw some slides up and I want you guys to be able to see it. But getting the first facility, as you heard Darnico call it, notice he used the word facility. Now that's a single family home. I love the way he made that sound fancy. I do the same thing. I have facilities. See the way when you speak it, people are respected by the way you talk about it. Absolutely. I don't have houses. Now, between us, we may use that. But when I'm speaking to the right people, I have facilities. I'm so glad he said that. So in one of my facilities, and I'm going to show it to you, it's one of the biggest ones I have. It's a mansion that has the ability to house up to 15 people. Now, we don't put 15 people in it. But just to show you the ability and how big it is, well, we're going to do probably like 10. And we'll talk about the math about that as well. But most of us may can't go out and buy a property. And this is where it gets really interesting with this model because you don't have to own the property to do this. I also don't need a license. I don't need to go to DCF and ACA and my local government entities to get permission. None of that. I got people in over 25 different states under our coaching that can prove the same thing to you on that. Okay. So again, once I figure out if I'm going to rent that place or buy it, most of us now, you can buy it or if you have it already, God bless you. Most of us need to figure out how to rent that place. I'm going to bring up a slide real quick and I'm going to show y'all something, right? Put a number uh, seven in the chat if you guys can see my PowerPoint because y'all know I ain't very techy. So if y'all can see that, let me know by saying yes or put a number seven in, in the chat. I want to do a few things here, right? And as, as y'all know, we, we've already kind of said, what is an ILF? That's an independent living facility, a shared living environment where we can take people from homeless to hopeful without the need for staff, a license, or the need for me to own that place. That means I can go and rent that building, guys. And for us, that means I want them to be able to live and thrive without the need for medical oversight. The first three steps to getting started is number one is, I kind of said it, but watch me get, give you a different order now, because if you're new to us, your first step is to make sure you soak up the YouTube channel and always follow us on lives, Monday, Tuesdays, and Saturdays. The next step is to watch the free ILF webinar. We get so tickled by the people that think that we should actually be charging for that. Like, they can't believe we give that away for free. In fact, the last three people that bought the ILF Mastery Blueprint, 
they can't believe we gave so much value in a free webinar. That's why they bought it. Don't even talk about just the webinar. What about your the 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 strategy call that comes with it? And that's the next thing, actually, right? So I'm gonna definitely hop into that because Shay, without that strategy call, how do they know if we're gonna even be a good fit, Shay? Right, right. So to watch that webinar, which is absolutely free, and that's also at forcedconsultants.com. But like Shay said, the most powerful thing after that is that 15 minute strategy call. And I dare anybody in here to call me a liar and say, I only gave you 15 minutes. <laughs> Most of those go 45 minutes long. Put a yes in the chat if you've experienced one of my strategy calls. If that means all of my IMB members should be putting that, anybody that had a call this week, HRA people, anybody that has experienced a strategy call for me, Donico, raise your hand. Anybody. And you got more than that 15 minutes. That's literally what that's about. And then that next step is for you to take action. And right now is the greatest time to take action because everything's on this crazy sale. Go ahead and scan that real quick, y'all. I think my team did a good job of putting these QR codes up. So even for the people that see this on the recording, you guys can scan this to subscribe to the YouTube channel and to watch both the HRA webinar and the ILF webinar because we do this in two ways, right? When you meet us, you're either going to do this yourself, meaning you're going to start your own housing program, or you're going to be a housing referral agency to where all you do is refer people out and you still make money and you still make an impact in your community, but you never need the real estate. That's why the HRA is so powerful. Somebody said, well, Derek, what does it look like? Guys, it's a single family home that I'm still going to call a facility. Now, God blessed me with this one a while ago. Couple, I've been renting this house, guys, for years now. This is probably ILF number three for me. Out of all of the ILFs that I have, this is probably ILF number three. It is ILF number three. Six bed, three bath, right? That's a mansion, ladies and gentlemen. When most people walk in this place, they start crying. Now, y'all know that we laugh and we joke and we play a lot, right? But I want to be serious for two seconds. Some of the clients that when they drive up to this place, including the driver, they're like, they're like, in other words, you guys house homeless people in this nice of a place? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the whole meaning of this, y'all. We're taking people from homeless to hopeful. Remember, they used to live in the woods. They used to live in squalor. They used to live in rats and roaches. Situations. My job is to show them something that looks a little bit different, like this slide you see right here. So when people say, well, Derek, what does a room look like? There you go. Two beds, pillow, comforter, brand new sheets, brand new comforter, towel, bath cloth, toothbrush, toothpaste, a roll of toilet paper, shampoo, conditioner, mouthwash, deodorant. We call that the welcome kit. Because somebody thinking right now, Derek, do you give that to them all the time? Nah, that ain't really my responsibility. They're independent, remember? But just to say, welcome to the Angela Denise Foundation. Welcome to Second Chance Housing. Welcome to Fresh Start Housing. Welcome to Saints Care. Welcome to Good Samaritan. This is kind of what we give them. We call it a starter pack. Now, my wife houses women. Elderly women, most of the time. Shay, I want you to interject for two seconds, right? Absolutely. Shay, you're a nonprofit. Yes. Do you also give them these bags or were you the one created it anyway? I, I both. <laughs> That's where the idea came from, y'all. Shay did that. A little bit of both. So we do this, um, again, like Derek said, through a nonprofit organization. A lot of times we get a lot of donations that come in to us that help us to facilitate the ongoing uh, welcome kit. Not a welcome kit, but an ongoing kit um, for our ladies. It may not be monthly, but it can be quarterly, depending on what those um, what those donations look like. We bag them up, get them looking nice and right, and send them on over to our ladies' houses. Um, not only do we just cover our women's houses, I've also adopted um, several other organizations where when I get bulk items in um, or bulk donations in, I'm able to offload those organizations with items for their women as well. Um, so yeah, that's where the idea came from. Why not set them up with with the, the necessities that they need and also give them a nice little way to carry it or utilize and it. And Shay, in case if I missed it, where do you get this stuff from? Are you buying it brand new? Are people donating? How are you getting these items? Donations. And then um, here recently, I've partnered with another organization 
and again, donations or partnerships. So we're now looking at uh, kind of reorganizing the way we get our donations in, and that's going to be by more partnerships. So we're looking at ongoing grants um, for items, not physical do physical dollars, but items, um, things that we can use. And that's a new thing that that we're doing as well on top of getting in just regular donations. So, yeah. I love it. So, and, and the reason why I wanted Shay to say that is because guys, donations should be a big part of what you do. When you're trying to start your own independent living facility, if you guys were anything like me starting out, you know, right? I was, guys, I, I wasn't doing very well in life. I didn't have that much money. So how can I make a room look this good without spending a bunch of money? Watch this. Advertising on social media that you're looking for gently used items. These headboards that you see, thank God that because we post so much, there is a hotel that saw and sees what we do. So when they wanted to revamp their hotel with millions of dollars of brand new furniture, who you think they called to get rid of all the old stuff? We were on that list of many other people that say, hey, if you come and get this stuff, you can have it for free. But if you don't come get it, there'll be a dumpster here in three days and we could throw it all out. And they prefer you to come and get it. They prefer you to come and get it. Because it's cheaper for them. Say that again, Shay. It costs them less when you, costs them less money. Talk about it. Instead of them dumping it, they rather you come and pick it up. So they will hold off. And they on can the do a number. little bit of a write-off thing too. Yeah. And they can hold off on the number of dumpsters they get and the allocation of of you know tossing this stuff because it's a now it's a bulk, uh, like a bulk garbaging or however you want to say that. And they now have to pay for that. So why not take it off their hands? And I put it in in, in the chat again. I, I, I just typed it. And if you are with this, put a thumbs up. I put, don't be too, too proud to ask for stuff, yeah. right? I'm also a thrift store guy when we, we need like the little stuff like coffee maker, coffee pot, coffee I mugs, can. plates, cups, yeah. pots, pans, silverware. Now, if you want to be bougie and go to walmart and buy this stuff and i'll admit guys i i do a lot of walmart too but i'm talking to the guy right now that said Derek, man i don't have a bunch of money a lot of strategy calls that i took this week they say now Derek, i don't have a lot to get started man show me the most affordable way not cheap way but what's the most affordable way thrift shop and asking for stuff watch this and here's a here, here's a small joke my wife used to hate this y'all i'm about oh, to tell them shay oh, when we first started everything came from my house so if I needed a coffee table, guess where it came from? If I needed a TV, guess where it came from? If I needed spoons and forks and knives and plates to start a brand new facility, guess where it came from, Marcus? Right here. My house. Till so one day, one night, they came home, late night shift. She still had a job at that time. She came home to no, put her food. A, it wasn't a late night shift. That was me working. I, I thought it was I, a late night shift. No, I think I did like. 10 hours of overtime or something. I so it was like, late night yeah, probably. That was 10 was hours. Late. Either way, <laughs> they came home and it was dark. And she usually put her plate of food, if she has food or her purse, on this dining room table, the I'm way that our telling, apartment I'm used to be set up. Guys, when Shay walked in this particular night, Shay dropped her plate and everything in it hit the floor because the table's missing now. I took the table to a future ILF as I was setting it up and she didn't know so, it. Nico, I was hot. Furniture. <laughs> carpet pictures you guys name it when you want to be very affordable from the beginning you take it from your house but guess what shay also learned that if i take a tv she gets a brand new tv if i take a sofa set ashley furniture pulls up at the front door in a week yeah if i take a dining room table rooms to go coming in two weeks so she began to love when i do that prime example this house that we're getting ready to start we're already thinking about that the downstairs furniture, that's probably where it's going. Yeah. My mom right now wants a new furniture set. Guess where her old furniture going? In one of these ILFs. Yep. So back to what I put in the chat, guys. Don't be too proud to ask for stuff. You would be amazed if you just go to Facebook and say, hey, guys, we're starting our next housing program. And we're looking for gently used twin beds, love seats, couches, furniture. Dining room tables, chairs, outside patio furniture. Also plates, cups, bowls, spoons, and a coffee maker. Guys, don't be too proud to ask for stuff, right? And again, 
only thing that you guys can see that's new in these pictures, that lamp, that came from that hotel, y'all. That dresser thing that is sitting on, I don't know the proper name, y'all, but that came again from the hotel, the headboards hotel. Now, that comforter, that came from Walmart. The mattresses, box springs, everything that you see in here was hotel. hotel. Yep. Yeah. We took how many U-Hauls? Man, yeah, Shay, tell them how many ILF members showed up that so, day to get that stuff. Yeah, what we ended up doing is we partnered. Um, we every local ILF family member and those that even were not local, we found out when this hotel was going to be ready. And this wasn't a small motel. This was a resort. A resort, um, not yeah. far from Disney. Yep. Uh, and they were like, "Listen, we've got X amount of time." Um, can y'all be in here on, was it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? They give us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So what we did is they told us this on Monday. So we put out a blast email to all of our ILF family members and told them, Hey, this is how we're going to do it. If you're interested, let us know. And then what we're going to do is we will start scheduling dates and times so that people can come in and, and get their items. Um, thank God for our, one of our sisters, not Lynette, the accountant, but Lynette, one of our ILF family members was the, the spearhead of the scheduling and actually being on site to help and make sure that people weren't just gouging, you know, just coming and taking stuff and not going to use it. So she made sure that there was enough or trying to sell it. Like that was right. not the point. Like if I, I even told her, I said, if I find out somebody is coming to get this stuff to sell it. You guys would be like excommunicated from us if that's a real right. word. But Absolutely. this is for people that are starting ILFs or for, for you to donate to mm -hmm. somebody who needs housing or some furniture. Or again, ILF stuff. This is for your ILF or your next future ILFs. So multiple of our members, guess what th their garages are full of? And they were able to use it to, to start several different ILFs. And that's what I'm saying, it right. It that yep. much furniture. Like we were able to do what the the riverside i mean lakeside river river um riverview lakeview riverside geez how am i messing up the two <laughs> we were able to do and these are huge huge locations. properties um more uh because what riverside had riverside like 12 like, beds or something that was yeah. a huge huge facility yep. that we we so had again, we were able and lakeview that. was on the lake and also had i think 12 beds yep. Um, I got a whole story about that that I think I'm gonna um, open up on Monday. That's gonna be but, but again, guys, now what is brand new is that comforter, the pillow, the sheets, and as you can see on the end of that bed, there's a, a towel and a washcloth. What you don't see in that dresser is a roll of toilet paper, tooth toothbrush, toothpaste, all of that stuff, that's shampoo. So that's on us, and because Shay get it for free. How genius does it look for us to give them that as a starter pack? Yeah. So when we advertise the case managers and social workers and say, hey, ma'am, you know, even though we don't do it ongoing, we do supply the toiletries, you know, every now and again. Now, you don't advertise that to them, but I want to tell you as their case manager, nobody comes to Second Chance Housing and don't have a toothbrush, toothpaste, right, mouthwash, shampoo, conditioner, because guys, you got to understand. Some of the people that you're going to bring in are only going to have the clothes on their back. Yes, sir. So how great is it that Shay came up with, with the idea? Let's buy these cinch bags from Amazon. Shay should have the, the link to that. But Shay was getting like, like 100 of those cinch bags for like 15 bucks. Yep. She gave it to her home girl to hot press the logo on it. And now they get our logo, the bag. And Shay was so smart. She got the ones that's got the reflectors on it. Yep. So that if our clients walk at nighttime, they're being safe. And now they can double use that bag for multiple things. So, again, this is our way just, just, just to say welcome to Second Chance Housing. Welcome to the program. Blah, 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 blah. Well, this is what a typical room looks like for us, guys. And I didn't spend a whole lot of money. These headboards right here, that came from Offer Up. Those two in the corner, they were $10 a piece. The other one. Somebody just donated that one. So the brown one, they donated it. Put a three in the chat if you can see this room. The comforters, those are brand new. That pillow, that's brand new, right? Those three drawer sterilite dressers from Walmart, brand new. Those are like 15 bucks, guys. So when people say, what does it look like? I just showed you. And this is what that private room looked like. That means that they're not going to have a roommate. That is one bed. 
Mm-hmm. That private suite, that means they got their own bathroom now. Right? So my housing model for when my VA just gets the phone call and that guy say, man, this sounds good, but I ain't sharing no room, man. I'm 65 years old. I've been living by myself my whole life, bro. I ain't sharing no room. No right. problem, sir. We also have private accommodations. Would you want to know about that? So that's why when we tell you all, this is one model has three different housing choices. The shared model works for most people because of the income they get. That private room, that guy said, man, you know what, Derek? I don't mind sharing the bathroom, bro, but I can't share that room. No problem. Here's going to look like this. No bathroom in there, right? But that guy that said, Derek, man, listen, I get good income. I got a job. I get a pension. Like, tell me what that private room go for. And you get a lot of people that. And that's that, the guy that want a room yeah. that looked like this, y'all. That's the bathroom to a private yeah. room, Shay. No, you, I was just saying, you get a lot of people that that honestly don't even mind the shared living space. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, who, what grown adults want to share? You don't realize people's situations and you're allowing them an opportunity to get out of their bad circumstance into a good place to live. You don't realize what you give people when you're saying, hey, this is what we have. I know any of our of our family members here on the platform speaking with us can attest to this. Um, a lot of times we're prideful because we're not in that situation. So you've got individuals that will, you have individuals that are um, very open to the opportunity to sharing a space with somebody. And when they know the, the, the procedures that you take them through and they see that that's something that you're doing ongoing with everyone, it makes them even more comfortable in the choices of those people that will be brought into your housing program, making their, uh, making them more apt to saying, yes, if you're going to take me through all these questions, all this assessment, all of this process, do you do that to everybody? Yes, sir. We do. Yes, ma'am. We do. Our goal here at the Angela Denise Foundation at Second Chance Housing is to make sure that we're putting the right people in our homes and to make sure that we're making it a safe, making sure that you have a safe a uh, roommate that the structure is safe no matter who the individual is coming in the goal is to make sure that everyone in the house is one comfortable and safe that's good stuff i love it and just again just to kind of tie all of this back around to the title is it you know how do you house displaced adults who receive guaranteed income so as much as i would want to have an open shelter where i can house people for free i'm not rich like that yet one day, God is going to bless us to be able to have a big old commercial building. And I'm going to house a lot of people for free. Absolutely. But the goal of it is not to always give free rent. The goal is to tie case management into it, social services, and then to get them into the independent facility model, then their own apartment, and maybe one day their own house. But right now, we serve the individuals that either get SSI, SSDI, yep. or have a rich uncle or a rich mom or dad, or they have a job. So I got I house I house people that want this same environment that you all are viewing right now, but they work at Walmart, Sunny's Barbecue, they work work at the gas station, the local ice cream shop. We house a guy that do local odd end jobs. Yeah. I'm hearing from the house that we're getting ready to take over. Out of the seven people that are there, two of those guys don't have SSI. There is no Uncle Joe, and his mama don't pay the rent. I said, well, how he get his? Well, how he? He's the shade tree mechanic in the neighborhood. Fell on hard times and needed a place to live because he couldn't afford his apartment. So now we're housing that guy. But he's the shade tree mechanic. And just in case if you don't know what a shade tree mechanic is, he doesn't work at Ford. He doesn't work at Chevrolet. But he's the best mechanic in the city that everybody goes to his house or he's mobile and he'll come to you. That's what we call a shade tree mechanic. We house that guy. We house another guy that, again, it's a little sketchy. I'm going to assess him, but he goes to the blood bank. He donates plasma, blood, and does other odd-end jobs in the city to pay his rent. So, again, we're going to go assess all of that. So, again, guys, I'll be honest with you, right? I'm not real picky of how they get their income. My job is to provide a safe, clean living environment. Exactly. And for the guy that said, Derek, I can't afford my own house. 
Derek, I can't afford my own apartment. And Derek, my background too screwed up. And I got an eviction on my record. Derek, I can't go live anywhere. But I saw your uh, flyer in Walmart. Did y'all see my social media? Put a thumbs up in the chat if you saw my social media this week of the gentleman that saw my flyer in Walmart. And we drove to Walmart to go assess that guy. Yeah. So don't think that I got to be in some fancy office sitting behind a desk and talking all proper. I went to the Walmart parking lot and done an assessment on that guy. Now, I didn't say this in the video because I didn't want to be, you know, but if you look at his hand, guys, he had cash money and his debit card ready to pay rent. If you missed it, go back and check it out. In his hand, he couldn't believe when I showed him the pictures of where he could live. And there's pictures just like this, y'all. You show pictures like this to a guy that's living on the street. You show pictures like this to a guy that don't even know it's an option to have his own room, own bathroom for only $900 in Orlando. I was a no-brainer to him. Lucky for me, he's tied to a program that now want to meet me for some of the other people. Lord have mercy. That's how that works, Donico. <laughs> Tiffany, that's how that works, right? So, again, I hate to keep asking y'all put things in the chat, but if you understand that and understand what we're coming from, put a fire emoji in the chat. If you understand the gist of what we're talking about today, put a fire emoji in the chat if you understand that you don't have to own the property, you don't need a license, and really all this takes is relationship, knowing social workers and case managers, and we give you, and we give you that on the free webinar. So for me, this is not rocket science, guys, because when I was a poor social worker making 28 grand a year, I thought I had to buy the house. I thought I had to get this expensive training right? and all of this CNA and learn how to give out medications. Uh-uh. This doesn't require that. <laughs> this requires a big heart for people. You got to love God because that's what, what's going to bring the love for, for people. And if you got some patience. And if you just happen to love real estate, game over. Because this shows you a model, because I do both of them. Now, watch this. I also buy property and I rent to whole families. Section 8, a mom, dad, and three kids. That's one income. God bless me if that mom or dad lose their job. Guess who the last guy get paid? Me. Because she's going to pay the light bill. She's going to pay the water bill. And she's going to buy them kids grocery. The husband got to eat too. The landlord is the last guy to get paid when you rent to that one family and it's not through Section 8. It's just that they got a job and they go to work. But we teach all the model where you take that same four-bed, two-bath home and house eight people and they receive a guaranteed income. And one thing, if you know anything about us at Forster Consultants, we love what we call a win-win situation. Watch this. The win-win situation for us is this. We house a population of people that understand that they can't go live anywhere else other than this shared living environment to where their lights, their water, their cable, their Wi-Fi, and security system is all taken care of for one fee. And Derek, most people that do this model, um, not the ILF model, but do the, the shared housing model, they still tie in at a separate rate a fluctuating um, utility payment. And that's what we don't want. Like we don't do that because our goal is to make sure that the housing cost is, is appropriate for what they have in income. Our goal is to not, uh, they're already coming out of a, a, a strict or a, a tight space. Why make it even tighter? Why? Why would we do that? Why are we going to make the situation even tighter for them to, to be able to, to live? So that's the reason why we keep all utilities included in that bed fee. Good stuff. We're known as a one-stop shop, guys. So when you start this, because we're going to believe everybody that's watching this, you're going to one day be an operator. Yep. When you start this, one of the genius ways, and, and, and here's some real game, right? Listen up real close. You may want to write this one down. When you start promoting this and talking to case managers and social workers, break it down by the day. My brother was genius for that, right? Otis kind of was the first person that kind of told me to do it that way. Because watch this. I'll be transparent. My bed fee is 680 somewhere from 680 to 700 per bed. But what if I broke that down and said $22 a day? Man, I'm hard to beat like that. I'm hard to beat like that because if you find the worst 
the worst is, if that's a word, no. Roach Motel <laughs> in your city, I guarantee it's more than 22 bucks a day. Oh, that's I true. guarantee it's more than 33 bucks a day. So when I advertise and I'm talking to case managers and social workers or the individual, the way that you really sell this, sir, I'm $22 a day and, and I cover the lights, the water, the cable, the Wi-Fi, and your own security system with your own door lock code. My clients are thrilled by the actualization, if that's a word, I'm, I'm saying some weird words today, right? <laughs> that we can actually give them their own door code. Now, do you want to talk about people that are excited that they get to choose their own door code? That, that's quite interesting. When we moved Kevin yeah. in, Shay Friday, he was like, huh, I could choose my own number? Yes. He felt secure by that. Talk about that, Shay. Yeah, Why don't we do, it. let's go into that. Why don't we do digital door locks and just go into that Absolutely. story about Kevin? And I pray all of our people on stage that have ILFs have ditched the key, okay? Um, keys are dramatic and can be a pain in the backside, right? Um, what The reason why we did change to the digital door lock was because one night, this is when Derek and I were still in, still working and had ILFs, a, a client that worked overnight shift um, got locked out of the house. Yes, got locked out of the house. And this house was about 25, 30 minutes away from our house. And Derek got up at about four o'clock in the morning to go let this individual back in the house. Several times. Yeah. And I was like, Derek, we've got to do this. This is not going to work. Shay, what can we do to alleviate this? Like Shay's the techie lock. guy, right? I, I didn't even think of that, dummy me. Shay was like, Derek, get some digital door locks, bro. And do you, and you'd never do Derek, that again. I was like, oh, genius. The whole time we got a whole digital door lock on our front door, right? And, and we ain't thinking about it. Really? R really? So, um, so that's literally what did that. But I think what really took the, <laughs> took the straw off the camel's back is we had so many houses, right? And my sister-in-law was working with us at the time and Derek had said, Hey, can you go get some keys made? And when she came back, Derek, <laughs> <laughs> when she came back, she came back with a bag of keys. Like <laughs> she just dumped them out. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? What do I do with this? A bag of keys. <laughs> and Derek was like, man, what a waste. Oh, no, no. Shay, order all door locks. Order them all. But the reason why we even allow our residents to choose their code is because it's something that they would remember. Nine times out of 10, they're going to choose something that they use regularly. So why not give them something that is consistent instead of me making up a code that they now have to remember? And then, you know, they'll call me, hey, Ms. Shay, I forgot my code. What is it again? No, bro, it's the same code that you use on everything that you chose. You chose this code. Um, so it makes it easy and it's it's very beneficial. And you see that they really enjoy it. They love it because to them, that's a form of security. So when you guys hear me talk about the lights, the water, the cable, the security, that's involved in that. Also with my camera systems. So if you didn't know, our ILS, we put cameras in it, right? And that's a part, again, what makes our clients feel safe. So Kevin was really. I mean, he was amused that he got to pick his own door code. He thought that was pretty cool. Also, to an answer to Katara's question, hey, sis, she said, what brand and type of digital door lock do you guys recommend? Say, so put that on the screen if you can. The so, one we purchased only lets us set one code. And I'm going to let Shay answer that. Ooh, no. She said, all my guys share the same code. Oh, boo. No. So we, we went a little more expensive. We got the um, the quick set halo the halo allows it's it's wi-fi enabled so when you have a new move in per like let's say you have a new move in or a new resident coming in um you can actually set that door code and you're not there um you can unlock the door when you're not there you can lock the door and you're not there right so those are the reasons why we choose that one that is wi-fi enabled and i can put about a hundred and something uh codes on that yeah, most of those locks that come with at least usually a minimum of about 20. I haven't seen the one that kind of give you one. So definitely do the uh one that's Wi-Fi enabled. Because again, Katara, I've seen your social media, right? You live in your best life. What if you in Jamaica with your feet kicked up on the beach, but you want to move in somebody or change somebody's door lock? You can literally do that while you're in Jamaica with your feet kicked up. So I want to show something real quick. So it's, as you see right here, if you can see it, one of our houses, the door is unlocked. 
So I'm going to tap on this and lock their door. Right now, that door is locking. And hopefully they hopefully they have it closed. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the door wide. So, so it's locked now. I've, con- I've just locked one yep. of the doors. Yeah. So and and, and we're the- miles away from that place. That's so, the big house. So don't get tricked with the ones that say Bluetooth. Because if it's Bluetooth, you still have to be there. You have to be within range. This is like a master class today. So definitely get the one that's Wi-Fi enabled. Again, that way if you're on vacation, you can move in somebody. Even for like your work orders, you got the AC guy coming. You can give him his own code that lasts for one day. Prime example. He's another example. Shay, Shay genius, y'all. Shay knew one day that we was kind of, I'll he say, moving on house. from a guy. He was being evicted. And we already knew the day he was leaving. Shade had his door code expiring on the day he left. See how genius that is, guys? So, again, little things like that, because keys can be a nightmare. Other question for Eli Smith. Eli says, where do you put your cameras? Of course not in the rooms, right? Right, Eli. So, only in the common areas, Eli. And the things that we like to do is get the motion-sensitive cameras. That means that when my client stands up from the couch and walks to the kitchen, it follows him. Because if you just put two cameras in your place and they're just pointing at one specific area, you can miss something really important. I hate to say it, but say they have a fight. I hate hate to say that, but if you need to prove it or give that footage to the police, your camera's pointing to the corner. The fight happened in the other corner. So we do cameras that are called, and that's all kinds of them, but YI, Yankee Igloo, um, Ye Home Camera. But as long as they're motion sensitive, I don't care what brand they are, right? And I should be dropping a uh, affiliate link for it. So, oh, yeah. but anyway, you want to make sure that your cameras are in the entry area. So the coming and going of the door and the hallway. So most of my houses, we've been blessed that we only really need two cameras because it's pretty open. Now, if you got a house that's got a lot of corners and a lot of corners and we turns, have, we have the one that has one, two, three, you may have five. to get multiple, but most of our houses, two cameras pretty much do it. But we've had houses that had four cameras in it, five cameras, right? Even that large home that we have is so open, you kind of don't need all of it. Like one camera almost covers the whole upstairs. You just got to place it in the right place. And Shay kind of, again, is our techie person um, for that. So that was a great question. Absolutely. So, Derek, go ahead. Who's that, Neonta? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, uh, there's a uh, the door lock uh, that's we we use. It's called Sif. I don't know if it's Sifley or Sifley, but you can all we do fingerprints and uh, the what you call it, See, and that works that. really well um, as well. Especially because I have a, a quite a bit of older guys, and sometimes they forget those numbers, <laughs> so Ooh, they can that. use their Got fingerprints it. as okay. well. So I've that's seen awesome those, network. but didn't know how accurate they would be. But I'm glad you said that. Beyonce, I want yeah, to love do it. Me a favor. I, I think that is a great thing. If you can um post of either a video or a quick audio in the FC University um of yourself, just explaining what that is. And you can do just an audio note. You don't have to just say, hey guys, pertaining to the conversation today. Um, here's a, a door lock and tell them the features. I love that. Will do. Thank you. Um that's wow. I I always saw those, but never kind of went for them. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. And, and just recently, I'll drop another little gem. We bought a really, I won't call it cheap, but we, we bought a really affordable one. Because as you guys know that I'm really not co-ed, right? I've never, well, I have. have. In the beginning, <laughs> I was co-ed until we pulled Shay from corporate America. And then she houses the women. But um, we recently did another takeover uh, of the estate, that big mansion. And we do have two ladies. Um, Shay and I felt comfortable and we just felt not that it was super needed. It just made us feel more secure. We wanted the ladies to have a digital door lock on their uh, bedroom door. Yeah. So in the estate, which is the largest house, and I'll go back to it just to show you guys. I would love to give the, the visual if I have it. So let's see. In this house right here, um, if you walk in that door, probably three feet. Two feet after opening the door, you walk upstairs. Once you get to the top, if you make a sharp left, that's where the room started. And and, and then they go all the way across the back. So I'm giving y'all the visual. And the far left is the ladies' room. We literally bought a lock from Amazon for like 45 bucks. And I love it. Like, it's fast. It's 
Like it was quick. It was an easy setup. My brother-in-law came and did it in like 10 minutes yep. and the girls liked it, right? They felt more secure by having their things locked in that room. Cause I'll just kind of drop this to you. That room is also so large that one of the females wanted her own refrigerator. We allow that. So she keeps some of her grocery in her room. Yeah. So Shay. Yeah. Um, that lock that we have on that door at that location, I tell anybody if you, and this is going to be me giving some gems in, in the, the, this is ILF mastery blueprint talk here. Right. But when you have private rooms and you, you know, that those individuals more than likely want a lock on their door, right? Yeah. What better way than you being able to access that door as well than by putting a digital lock, right? That's a benefit for you in the case, in the event of an emergency. And when I say an emergency, I'm talking about somebody goes in the room, falls out. Nobody has access. Instead of breaking down a door, we have a master code that if, let's say the ambulance, anybody needs to get in, we give them that code. So it's all about making sure that you have these things implemented um, appropriately. So I just wanted to drop that gem. So any property that we do now, um, especially the the new one that's coming up that y'all will see yep. in the new year, uh, that house will have a lot of private rooms. So those doors will have this. Probably all except lock. one. Yeah, this this house will have that particular lock on all doors. Because because we're also adding a bedroom to, to that house. One yes. of the uh, formal dining rooms, we're going to turn into a bedroom. So I, I agree. Probably every room in that house. And that's for my people that, um. so if you're on this live and you own real estate or you want the people that buy real estate, we, we often encourage you all to don't do two per room. Right. So if you own the real estate or you're somebody that buys real estate, um, we often lean to tell you guys because your mortgage is usually lower than what we as renters pay. So we like to tell people like that, that own the property that um one person per room and just make them all private suites. Correct. Or if there's not bathrooms, you just, again, make them private rooms. And now instead of your normal fee of just say $600, now you're charging $900 per room. Yep. So just make them. So less people, less problems. My motto is this. If everybody has their own room, what are we fighting about? Why do we have problems? And Shay and I have decided, I think, and we're still thinking about it, praying about it, we may offer the refrigerator, the yeah. little mini fridge, the TV. And remember, guys, I don't buy TVs for every room. One TV well, per know. room. And, and put them on the wall. Right? And... But now we're thinking that with the one that we're, we're definitely buying, why not? And just charge the up fee and give it a reason to be that private suite, whether it's got the bathroom or not. Because yep. if I put them, the mini fridge and, the, and all these other little added things, even a little safe, maybe that's a private room to me, even without the bathroom. So you're able to charge a premium and also give people what they want. We are housing a lady right now. Y'all watch this. She got a full time job and she's not what you would think. Well, homeless, not that kind full time job, but just displaced for the moment. We're all praying that things are going to get better. But for the moment, been on her job over 15 years. Great lady. Nothing wrong with her mental health. None. And thank God for all of y'all in here that most of us, if we miss one or two paychecks, we could be this lady. So don't get that twisted either. My brother used, used to say all the time, some of us are only one or two paychecks away from, from being the homeless person that we're housing. Yeah. So that's why we're trying to use the word displaced a lot more lately because everybody ain't quote unquote homeless as you think about it. Some people are just temporarily displaced. And to be honest with you, speaking of faith, that's a better way to say it. So try to encourage people that may be homeless to change their verbiage and their mindset. You're not homeless. You're just temporarily displaced. Yeah. This lady, if she if she pulled up on any of y'all today, she look good, yeah. smell good, professional, got a job, been there for 15 years, brand new car. But before coming to us, you wouldn't have knew it, but she was sleeping in the car. These are the population of people that we're looking to help, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to do that, type in the word me. Because again, the ILF Mastery Blueprint, which we teach you how to do this and we hold your hand, it's our one-on-one -on -one coaching yep. where we give you our accountant, we give you a complimentary virtual assistant, you get every product that we ever created, every book that I ever written, and you get me in your back pocket. So again, text 
813-1335 and type in the word IMB and you're going to be able to get that instead of for 15 grand, which it goes back to in January. Right now, guys, that's only $4,700, which is actually a steal. And if I were you, I'd try to go in with my family, my friend. I would apply for further financing. If you need that, use the same number, type in the word financing. My team will send you the link. It only takes 40 seconds to apply for it. So again, big shout out to all of the people and thank y'all so much um, for believing in yourself, but also believing in us that we have the power to teach it to you. Big shout out to the lady. And I, normally I wouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Big shout out to the lady that actually went to the website. She found us on YouTube, right? She was so excited that all the free information that she got on YouTube and from the webinar, she didn't know about the sale. She paid $15,000, y'all. And when my team called her and said, hey, ma'am, I think you missed it. Yeah, it's 15 grand, but right now there's a sale going on. She said, um, she politely told Tara and Jess, my assistants, she said, ma'am, thank you so much for being honest and I appreciate that. But I paid $50,000 just a couple months ago for a mastermind that was supposed to be something like what y'all doing. And you already done showed me more in your webinar and on the few YouTube channels I've watched of you. Y'all keep that money. That's how powerful the information is, y'all. Somebody that paid 15 grand didn't even go to my social media because if you just go to YouTube and you go to just the webinar, you don't get the message that there's a sale going on right now. She was so happy. She went straight to the website and paid 15 grand, the original price. My team, because we honest and say, hey, man, I, I think you missed it. You could have bought two of these, probably three if, 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 if my math, right? Yeah, three of them. It had change. She says, Derek, in other words, she said, Totara, I don't think you understand. I'm so appreciative of already what's about to happen in my life through y'all. Y'all keep that money. I paid 50 grand for a mastermind that didn't tell me half of what you gave me in your webinar, Derek. God bless you. So big shout out to her. I thank her so much. I appreciate that, um, especially during a very tender time that my family is going through. So yeah. thank y'all so much for that. I really, really appreciate it. This room actually ends in like, I think, four minutes. But if you go, but if you all have questions, concerns, I want to open it up. I also want, want to go back out to Tiffany, Dornico, or Neonta for any lasting words or any words of encouragement of how maybe they've gotten started. So maybe if you guys have questions for them and not me, they're also okay with that. They're all um, well-versed in what this is. In fact, they know it so well now that I don't even have to speak, right? But anyway, I'm here for the next three minutes for sure. Mm -hmm. But if you guys have questions or concerns, I'm here. My wife, Shay, is here. Shay does this, for, does this from a nonprofit standpoint. So if you want to say, well, I want to go nonprofit, Shay's your go-to when it kind of comes to that. Why does she do it? Does she re recommend it? And what's maybe the downside or the plus side to it? You guys are welcome to that. So thank y'all so much, first of all, for being here. Thank you that if you shared the room, but now is a great time that we'll take any questions that you have. And I'll turn it over also to my other moderators. Ms. Shea? There was a question um, from Angela asking about ways to acquire income, multiple streams of income, utilizing the, the Teespring store, or even just like selling the, the products um, to get to the house, like to get their house up and running. So I'll answer that. Um, some of the ways that we tell our clients when we talk about the, the Teespring and just different things like that, you've got to be consistent, right? Consistency will always bring a return, especially when it comes to selling or, or marketing a product or a service. So when it comes to utilizing the Teespring uh, platform, you want to make sure that you have designs, that you've got those designs and you're promoting them on somebody wearing them. Prime example, I think me and Derek addressed it like y'all. I just thought about it. Yep. You always wear what you do, right? Right. So we uh, master class. Uh, right. So you want to make sure that not only are you uh, posting these items or showing these items on your show, your social media, but also make sure that you're wearing these items. That when you go out into public, people are saying, oh, I like that shirt. Where did you get it from? Oh, I sell it. Here's the QR code on the back or on the shoulder. Or even just having, you know, a way for them to be able to, um, to ac 
assess access ooh, assess really access your your website or your spring store so the goal is to make sure that you are consistently promoting that thing um, making sure that it's not just pictures or or imagery but there's different platforms that you can utilize that will uh, create a short marketing something or another like that it will create a um like a commercial for you with people wearing your product, um, you know, with, with it on a model. So you want to make sure that you're utilizing things like that so that when you're not just posting a, a flat image of your product, but you want to make sure that you're doing it consistently, right? Um, not just once a day, not just one platform, have it on all. And, and I tell anybody like this, it's okay to have multiple Facebook pages, what you don't want to do or social media pages don't overwhelm people on one page with five different businesses, right? Right. Because now they're going to be like, well, what the heck does this person really do? Like you're promoting this, then you're promoting that. Then if you're not someone that's set up to just promote for other people on your platform, don't do it. Separate yourself by the, the business or the, the, the thing that you are doing. If it's coaching, you need to have a coaching platform. If it is selling product that is not in alignment with your coaching, don't put it on your coaching platform unless one day you just wear something and say, oh my goodness, guys, look what I did, you know, blah, 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 head on over to da, 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 so you can purchase. Or if you want to see upcoming or ongoing posts of my new products, make sure you follow me on my other platform because you don't want to cross pollinate your information. People are coming to you as a coach and they want to see coaching material, not coaching material. And then your sales page, and then this type of page and then that type of, you know, product and blah, blah, blah. blah. So you want to make sure that you are brand aware and that's what would position you to make sure that you are, um, getting the word out effectively to your audience, make sure you are targeting that audience in selling those products. So that's how you can utilize that, um, the Teespring or spring platform to make income. Again, it's all about marketing produce uh, and, and showing what you've produced and making sure there's a, a want for it, seeing how people feel about it and getting them to now buy it. But you also have to be aware of your brand when it comes to brand awareness. People want to see that it is, if it's good enough for you, it'll be good enough for them, right? They don't want to see you selling a product that you will never wear or never use. So that's another way of being able to market that effectively. I hope that helps. And also, I want to chime in there as well. Definitely also join us on Tuesday nights because usually Tuesday nights, that's kind of what we kind of gear it to more of the business coaching. And I'm saying that in faith and as in advance, usually Tuesday is about our, about our virtual assistant talk. But I think what we're going to do, especially because our digital flow, our digital flow solutions, Instagram page and business page is up and running now. I think what we're going to make Tuesdays are what we'll, we'll call business coaching. It kind of give you guys a little bit of insight on just also our business coaching in general. So most people know us for housing the homeless and the displaced and teaching that. But we're also business coaches no matter what you do. So every Tuesday, definitely join us and bring questions like that. But watch this, though. Here's a major gem. If you want to do that whole clothing thing, I always say this, too. Always put a purpose behind what you're, you're doing. So even when you're advertising it, your post should say something like this at times. Every purchase made here at put your name or your company's name gives back and you can name a certain percentage. Or if you don't want to be tied to a certain percentage or number, just say some proceeds go back into us housing the homeless. Because yeah. a lot of people like to buy with the purpose attached to it. And I always get the example mixed up where there's that shoe brand. And there's also a sock brand now that does it. Um, in fact, they were on that TV show, Shark Tank. Um, but um, Bob's and Tom's, can't remember, but it's one of them. When you buy one of their pair of shoes, some kid in Indonesia gets a pair of shoes. So people like to buy simply because there's a cause attached to it. You guys should do the same. So even for my Teespring store and my apparel store, right? Also get used to calling it not your Teespring store, but like mine is called Second Chance Apparel. So at Second Chance Apparel, the proceeds that we make goes back into housing the homeless. So I don't give a number. I don't give a percentage. I just say proceeds go back to, because I'll admit, I don't make a lot of money doing that. So whatever comes in, I throw that back into the light bill, maybe for the group, on, for, 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 for the ILF. 
Maybe if I got to buy supplies for the ILF, maybe in the wintertime, like I like to buy all of my clients' hoodies with my branding on it. How genius is it that you buy all your clients for Christmas sweatshirts or hoodies with your branding, your QR code, and on the back of it, it says, do you need a landlord? Call mine with your phone number and your business website. See, that's the business coaching that we do to show you guys how to promote and get the word out about what you do. And we always tell people, become a walking billboard. So you should be wearing some of the things that you're making. So like the day you come up with the design and all of that, make sure that you print some that you also wear it, okay? And don't be afraid to give them to your clients or your tenants. And the most powerful thing you can do is put your information with that QR code on it. So people can just scan it wherever and it all leads back to you. But back to that original point, make sure that you attach a cause to it. So if you're selling T-shirts, hoodies, caps, book bags, whatever, every bag that we sell, thank y'all so much because some of the proceeds actually go back into us housing the homeless. That goes, that means if you're an HRA or if you do this yourself. So that means that if you don't have a house, you haven't rented one or bought one, no problem. You can still mention this as an HRA, a housing referral agent. Okay. So hopefully that's good at everybody. And then Derek, I actually put um, something in the chat. It kind of cut up and is in different segments. So um, for those of you that want to join as we get ready to wrap up and to my family here, I, I was able to share with Nianta, some people that do follow us did receive a text message and an email that went out last night. Um, we are, Force and Consultants is partnering with the Angela Denise Foundation in adopting a family um, which is one of our own family members here at Forced and Consultants, not our personal family, but one of the our mentees um, that has suffered a tragic loss of their husband. And we would love, 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 love to adopt their family for the Christmas holiday. Um, our dear brother leaves behind four beautiful, beautiful, beautiful babies and a wife. The babies are all under the age of nine years old. Um, we just laid him to rest yesterday. Um, and we want you all, you don't have to donate money. You can send, uh, a gift for these children, whether it's clothing items, toys, whatever it is to an address that we've made available to you all. Um, to those of you that are interested, um, just do me a favor and put in the chat that you are interested or reach out to Forced and Consultants, reach out to our team on Monday. And, and they'll give you all of the information so that you can um, make that donation. Remember, this is going through a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So anything contributed to this, you will receive a tax uh, exemption letter or receipt that says thank you for, you know, being a part and a partner with this Christmas initiative that we are doing. Um, I hope you all will join as we make something happen for a family that really deserves it and, and help make a bright mm. Christmas holiday for children that have just lost their father. So join Absolutely. us in that. Yep. And, I, and if I can add to um, that, um, we've pretty much set it up to where their Christmas is going to be taken care of. So I'll kind of backtrack what she said about Absolutely. the toys. I wouldn't do the toy thing. You know that's kind of right. kit. That's kind of taken care of. Thank God. Um, but the clothing or the uh, monetary cash gift, um, that will probably help a little bit more because, again, thank God that the Christmas in terms of toys is taken care of. But they're little kids and they're growing every day. So clothing, shoes or cash will probably be more helpful for the mom as well. So with that being said, thank you all so much for that. And also, again, I don't want to just kind of glaze over, over that either. Sometimes, guys, our blessing is built into when we give. So when we open our hand, actually, and it's for something that's either sown into good ground, good seed or just a good opportunity. I think this is kind of both. Um, and again, some of y'all know this gentleman, right? He's a part of us. Um, again, tragically passed away. And some of y'all don't know it, but him and Otis passed on the same day. Really crazy, man. About 45 minutes apart from, from each other, actually. Um, they live in two totally different spaces. Never met in person, but actually passed on the same day. And like Shay said, left behind four beautiful kids, all under the age of eight. So can you imagine what mom's going through? So again, um, even if it's something as small as 20 bucks, $5 per person, like if you can do something, I would encourage you to open up your hand and even say a small prayer when you're doing it. God, I may not have much, 
but I want to sow this seed to somebody that probably need a little bit more than me right now. Take this seed, God, and also make my dreams come true. I want to start an ILF. I want to house the homeless. God, take this seed, help somebody with it, but also bless my life too. And I'll just end that like that. So other than that, I hope you guys got a lot of information from us today. I hope this was a mini masterclass. Thank you to all the people that were live. Thank you to the people that will watch this later on in, in the future. Um, and thank you to everybody that subscribed. Um, I'll give my salutation now, then I'll give it over to my moderators. But thank y'all because y'all could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here. So definitely don't forget about the um, ILF Mastery Blueprint sale as well as the HRA sale. And again, if you're interested, that number is 407-813-1335. And again, you can text to that number, IMB. And that means that you're interested in starting your own program. Or you can also text HRA. That means that you want to be a housing referral agency. That means you want to do what we do, but you don't have the real estate to do it in. But you still want to make an impact and an income. So definitely text that number and I just put it in the chat. And um, thank y'all so much, man. Just really, really appreciate you all being here. And if there's anything that we can do to help you guys, especially moving forward to get you started within real estate business or this shared living environment, don't be afraid to let us know. I'm Derek Forsett. I improve this entire message. Um, and thank y'all. Shay is looking at me really weird. So I'm not sure what's going on. If she can hear, if y'all can still hear me put yes in the chat. I'm not sure why she's looking like that at me. So hopefully everything's cool. But Dernico, bless the people real quick before you go, big bro. Uh, I, I I feel um, just just overwhelmed right now with emotion. Um, I think we all have a day. Um, we all have a time where we have to depart from, from this world. I think it is important to do all of the work now. It is important to teach and train our, our babies now. Uh, I think we can't allow society and the things of this world to condition us. And we have to be led spiritually to do and say all of what God would want us to do and say and do that now. I, I think uh, I would just say be encouraged, um, be uplifted. Make sure you do a good deed, say a good word, cover your family, cover people, whether you know them or not, because the enemy ain't stopping. He's on his job. We need to get on our job as believers. This ILF model is just one, one layer of what our task is as believers. Be diligent in, in your action. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it's time to do, you know what I mean? So I, I would just say that. I also would say, you know, to those women, you know, that suffered losing their protection, losing their covering, you know, keep them in prayer. Uh, it's very important to understand what they represented in the households. You know what I mean? It's very important to, to see that. And, and now being on the outside looking in, we were witnessing what looks like a loss, but God doesn't make mistakes. You know what I mean? So whatever he's doing, you know, we say yes, Lord, to your will and to your way, but we want to be a blessing to those that, that need us. So please be a blessing. Please uh, be mindful of, of what we should be doing and, and should not be doing in our day to day. So I love you guys. Uh, hey, do it big. Let's not wait until New Year's Eve to have resolutions. Get started now. You know, put a pen to a pad and figure some things out and, and be better. Amen. Love you guys. Good stuff. Thanks. So thanks, Big D. I appreciate that. Let's check with Neonta real quick. I'm not sure if she's getting ready for work or not. Sis, are you still with us? I'm actually just about to get start getting ready, but um bless the real people quick. real quick before you go. Real quick, I do want to say um to whom much is given, much is required. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, as you start this journey, because I just believe that uh, many people that haven't started yet that ILF journey, they will be. And those who are already in it, um, don't be discouraged when you start to see things looking like they're falling apart, because most times things start to fall apart before they come together. So stay encouraged and press uh, to the finish. 
<clears throat> and don't let anything deter you from your goals. Trust God through the process and he'll do what he does every time. Love y'all and I got to go to work. <laughs> Love you. Okay, Have a great you, day at work, sis. Have a wonderful day at work and thank you so much for being here. Miss Tiffany, talk to us, sis. Bless the people with something and give us an outro. Uh, yes, I would just say, just in my heart, um, just lead with love. Like you cannot go wrong if you lead with love because so many people are in this world that need it. They deserve it. God is love and he wants us to love people. And every day, like whatever it looks like for you, whether it's giving your time or donating or yes, you know, we're in an ILF space or whatever business you may be in. Believe me, there is an opportunity for you to love someone in some form or fashion on every day that you wake up. Because as we know, it's not promised. So love the people that are in your life. Love them hard. You know, tell them that you love them. Tell them that you care about them. Because you just never know what life is going to bring. And you never want to have regrets or look back and say, hey, I didn't think about this. Or I didn't think about that. Or I should have said this. Love people even if you don't know them. Like love them because you never know what somebody is going through. And especially during this time of the year, it just seems to bring about those emotions and feelings of people that may no longer be here or people that may be going through something or what have you. So, you know, it's, we all have an opportunity to bless people, not just ourselves, not just our businesses, but find other ways that your businesses and your personal selves and families can, can give and donate to other people and just make that your everyday goal and mission in this life is to, to love. And whenever it's time for you to be with God or our transition, you know, that, People will say, one thing I know about that person is they loved and they cared about people. And, and that's just, that's the biggest thing. I know that's how I live, try to live my life every day. And I encourage everyone on this call and anyone to hear later, let that be the driving force. The driving focus of your life is that you are known to be a person that loved and loved hard. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited about being here again tonight from Oklahoma City. We send you everybody on this call, big love, big hugs. We love you. You all are family, and it's nothing that we could ever change or do anything different about that. Love Good you, stuff. sis. Love it. Thank you so much, Tiff. I appreciate that. And we missed you, sis. If you had missed one more session, Tiff, we was going to send the police to your house and do something kind of like a, I don't know, okay. what you call it, Shay? A, we, wellness, check. a wellness check. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we was hoping and praying it all was well, but didn't want to be pushy and reach out and all of that. We said, now, if she don't show up Saturday now, we're going to have to reach out. So good stuff, and we're yeah, glad you're here. She so reached out to me. I got a, I got a response. And, and see, I, and see, Shay might have told me, but Tiff, I've been a little clouded lately, Tiff. You I know did. what just happened. So she probably told me, and, and it slipped. But I said, if we don't hear from Tiffany by Saturday, we're going to do a wellness check or phone call or something. <laughs> when you guys start. When you guys start to be really consistent and you're always here, like we notice if you go missing. So we love it when you guys are consistent like that. And again, when your family, it just looks different. It feels different when you guys are not here. So thank y'all so much for doing that. I'm going to turn it over to, to Shay. I'm going to let Shay bless us and we'll pray us out of here and we'll let you nice folks go. Again, I just want to say thank you all for being here today. Um, we enjoy having these moments where we can come in and just pour out into you know, to all of you all and, and give you ideas of and opportunities where you can make a difference in your community and in the, the people that you serve. Like, what better way to celebrate this holiday season than to provide someone that doesn't have with something, right? Whether it's housing or whether it's love, kindness, generosity, whatever it is that we can do. So today, I just want to say thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. I love you. And as again, just have a great weekend, spend time with, with family, friends, and your loved ones. And we look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Shay. So again, we'll see you guys on Monday. Um, I feel spicy, so just make sure that you guys don't miss Monday. We're going to have a nice, nice masterclass Monday. Oh, and also, if there's something that maybe we didn't cover today that you want to talk about Monday, put it in the chat or definitely text it to that number because that text message number, guys, can get y'all almost anything you want. It's almost like Burger King. So if y'all got a specific topic that you want us to talk about, you can even text that number and put topic and then whatever you want it to be then my team will know how to separate that and give that to me for the podcast stuff. So again, if there's something that you're looking for in terms of information, 
if you hadn't noticed by now, we give this game away, y'all. We're just super here for the people that also want the one-on-one coaching. But we're here, guys, every Monday and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, live, all the time, and every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. So, again, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in this. God, thank you so much for this time of fellowship. Thank you for the people that came out. Father God, I just ask that you open up every door of opportunity for these folks. Obviously, if they're here, they want to do what we're doing, which is housing your people in a shared living environment. So God, open up every financial resource, open up the real estate that are just falling in their lap. And Father God, allow them to be able to use us for the coaching of it because we want to guide them the right way. Father God, help me to be the right and the best coach at all times, pouring out everything that you've given to me. Because God, you're no respecter of person. If you've done it for me, and if you've done it for all the other people that we've taught this to in the 24 different states, you will do it for these people. So the devil is under your feet today, has no place in your life, your business, or your family, and you will succeed in Jesus' name. And if you need healing, and there's something wrong with you today, in the name of Jesus, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you are healed, delivered, and you're set free in Jesus' name. You guys be great. Go to church tomorrow or some form of place of worship. Tell God what you want to do and come back to us Monday and let's learn together. You guys be great and we'll see you soon. Watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Let him work it for your faith. Who am I talking to tonight? Watch him turn it for your good. He's not done with what he started. Because he's not done it until it's good. Hello, 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 it's a new horizon. Hello, 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 hello. It's a new horizon. If you're ready for a break, you can open up and just read. What he's pouring out is nothing. You've ever seen. Somebody lift your hands. Can you just speak it over your own life tonight? It's a new horizon. It's a new thing for you, yeah. It's here right now. It's a new horizon. It's a new horizon. 
Fear is not an abuse. You are sickness, not my story. You are a heart straight to not my bones. You are Thank you. 